Hi everyone, welcome to the ninth day of the 10 on 10 series. Before we begin, the homework that I gave you last time was when there is a down regulation of E. cadherin, the two tumors that can occur in the body, one is diffuse gastric carcinoma and the other is the invasive lobular carcinoma of the breast. If E. cadherin is not written, then the gene that is CDH1 gene mutation would be mentioned. Now by now we have finished majority of this timetable that we made. All the topic-wise telegram quizzes have been done and dusted. The two LRRs which were decided that were PATH and MICRO are also done. We are just left with two sessions of the 10 on 10 series with a slight change in this entire plan. So yes, I'm uploading day 9 and then I'll be uploading the next as well. Following which, I will also be coming up with another series of quizzes etc for microbiology. Let's get going with question number 1 for the day. They've asked you which of the following laboratory findings will be seen in a patient with von Willebrand disease. We know it's a disorder in which there is a deficiency of von Willebrand factor. Now first you must know what is normal von Willebrand factor responsible for. It does two things. Number one, whenever there is a blood vessel injury, we know it is the platelets which are going to help in a blood clot, right? So for platelet adhesion, what is required is von Willebrand factor. Imagine if von Willebrand factor is missing or is deficient, platelet adhesion will not occur and platelets are measured with bleeding time. So the bleeding time will end up getting increased. So I can see bleeding time increased in two options over here. Next, another function of von Willebrand factor is that it is a carrier of factor 8. So this means if von Willebrand factor is not working well, factor 8 will also not work well. Factor 8 is a part of the intrinsic pathway which means APTT is going to be increased over here. However, APTT is not mentioned in any of the options. They have focused more on the platelet count. Tell me, yes, there is a problem in the platelet function, but is there any concern of platelet count over here? Not at all. So the platelet count turns out to be totally normal and that's the finding that you will see in case of von Willebrand disease. To be very precise, the platelet count is going to be normal. The bleeding time is going to be elevated because the platelet function is affected. Prothrombin time has no problem, it's normal. And the APTT is going to be elevated, reason being factor 8 is affected. Moving on to question 2, you will always get something to do with multiple myeloma in the exam. And here they mentioned about the M spike. M stands for myeloma or monoclonal spike. It doesn't mean IgM. The most common antibody that is seen to increase in M spike is actually IgG. So that's a simple one-liner, which is the most common antibody that increases. If you look at the overall normal tracing over here, which is the maximum protein that we have in our blood, it is going to be albumin. After that, we have the alpha-1 protein, alpha-2 protein, beta protein, and gamma. And we learn it with the help of this finger diagram that the maximum protein over here is going to be albumin. Thereafter, the three fingers over here are going to be alpha 1, alpha 2 and beta and the thumb that is making a small tiny hill over here that is referred to as the gamma which is responsible for immunoglobulins. Here I see that in the patient the gamma spike has occurred that is the M spike most common is IgG. Do you know a disease in which IgM tends to increase and that is known as Waldenstrom's mycelium macroglobulinemia. If you look carefully, Waldenstrom's macroglobulinemia. Macro means that antibody which has the maximum molecular weight and that is going to be IgM and whenever IgM increases in the blood, it makes the blood very very thick, very very viscous. So it results in hyperviscosity syndrome because of which you can imagine if the blood is thick and hyperviscous, the patient will be having hemorrhages, blurring of the vision, there will be retinal hemorrhages, visual disturbances, headaches, all hyperviscosity syndrome symptoms will be seen. Scene. Moving on to question number three over here that which class of ALL or acute lymphoblastic leukemia according to FAB will show you cytoplasmic vacuolation. So as per the FAB classification we have ALL L1, L2, L3 out of which L1 is said to be the most common and is having the best prognosis. L3 is said to be the least common and has the worst prognosis but they've asked you from microscopy point of view. Cytoplasmic vacuolations are going to be seen in ALL L3. The reason for these vacuolations are fat. And if they are fat, what will they be positive for? ALL L3 blasts are positive for oil red O. And these are also previous year questions that they ask you moving on. This question I gave recently in the LRR as well and I saw a couple of students committing a mistake so then I decided to you know just reinforce that you have to read very carefully. You have a 60 year old male patient over here with fatigue for the last four months. On physical examination there is a massive spleen. I was teaching the students recently that there are a million causes of massive spleenomegaly but in the exam if the leukemias are asked think of CML. If another leukemia lymphoma is asked think of hairy cell leukemia and if an infection is asked 
think of colors are these three you should be thinking first because they will help you narrow down your choices now there is no lymphadenopathy seen let me go on to the lab studies the hemoglobin is 8 which tells me anemia is there mcv is 90 femtoliters you know normal mcv is between 80 to 100 femtoliters which means this is normocytic normal size of red blood cells and anemia is there so normocytic anemia coming to tlc 1600 the normal tlc is between 4000 to 11000 so definitely the tlc is decreased coming to the platelet count which is only 49000 normal being 1.5 to 4.5 lakhs from lakhs it has come to 1000 so the platelet count is also low i can see that the bone marrow is somewhere getting affected rbc has gone down the tlc has gone down the platelet has gone down now with the diagnosis and suspicion of hairy cell leukemia they've asked you to mark the incorrect statement hairy cell leukemia as we all know massive splenomegaly it involves which pulp of the spleen it involves red pulp of the scene uh, of the spleen that is true when i talk about infections think now look at the bone marrow the bone marrow is not producing too many right, uh, white blood cells infections will occur which is the most common infection the atypical mycobacterial infection especially mycobacterium avium complex can occur so that is also true now because it's hairy cells which is the best microscope on which you will see it it is seen on face contrast let me show you a picture if you look at them under light microscope you can see some tiny little hairy projections coming out again it's a little difficult to visualize you'll have to zoom in because that's a light microscope if you truly want to see them the best microscope on which you can visualize these is going to be the phase contrast microscope which will show you those thin hair like projections which makes it hairy cell leukemia also when i talk from genetics point of view almost 100 percent of the cases show you braf v600 e mutation which is important nearly 100 percent of the cases are going to show you this now this is all that where did i see these hairy cells i just took a peripheral blood simple blood sample and i saw it on bone marrow studies what will you notice now bone marrow there are two studies either you can do a bone marrow aspirate aspirate means taking the liquid portion out and on a hairy cell leukemia you don't see any material coming out it's a dry tap reason being that these hairy cells i'll just write them as hairy cells hc these hairy cells they are going to cause release some mediators and those cause a lot of fibrosis of the bone marrow so imagine you're putting a needle inside fibrous tissue how will you get any liquid blood out of it so that is why there's a dry tap so what is the investigation of choice if you're not getting anything on a bone marrow aspirate you will do a bone marrow biopsy on which you get fried egg appearance so do you get fried egg appearance yes but do you get it on a bone marrow aspirate not at all so that's it wrong over here that's false and that's the answer let me show you that this fried egg appearance will be seen on a bone marrow biopsy which means that this will be the nucleus and the surrounding is going to be white that is how these hairy cells or these uh, fried egg appearance cells are going to look like of course you've not forgotten that if a marker is asked for hairy cell leukemia it is going to be annexin which one annexin 5 or a1 it is going to be annexin a1 for hairy cell leukemia annexin 5 is for apoptosis well done with question 4 moving on to question 5 another simple one that what is not seen in Burkitt's lymphoma Burkitt's the famous starry sky appearance always a sure shot question in the exam so remember Burkitt's is always a translocation of 8 with an even number chromosome reason being that chromosome number 8 has something called semic so semic amplification has to happen in Burkitt's lymphoma the other chromosome can be any even number so 8 with 22 possible 8 with 4 14 possible, 8 with 2 also possible. What is not possible? is translocation 11 18 that is actually a translocation that is seen in marginal zone lymphoma it is not seen in Burkitt's moving on now today the first five questions that I kept were theory usually I keep five as images but recently we did LRR and we discussed too many images so I've decided to keep the next five today as one-liners you're going to fill in the blanks for me over here when I talk about caspases we did this in the recent session and this is a sure shot question in the exam what are the caspases for apoptosis for initiation we know the caspases are going to be 8, 9 and 10 and for execution the caspases are going to be 3, 6 and 7 which is important for you to know. Moving on to the next, when I talk about necroptosis there are no caspases, it is caspase independent. When I talk about pyroptosis it is going to be 1, 4, 5 and 11 caspases that you have to know. The annexin next one liner I just now told you, the one liner for annexin A1 you know it is going to be hairy cell leukemia. Annexin 5 on the other hand is going to be for 
for apoptosis moving on to the next we have strawberry appearances now there are so many strawberry appearances starting from strawberry tongue you know one vasculitis kawasaki disease and one infection also that is going to be the scarlet fever the next is strawberry gums g for g that is seen in wegener's granulomatosis the next one is strawberry nose polyps rhinosporidiosis if you remember rhinosporidium seaberry strawberry polyps in the nose strawberry cervix no one is getting wrong trichomonas vaginalis sexually transmitted disease strawberry gallbladder for surgery the gallbladder will have those yellow yellow dots because of cholesterol and that is known as cholesterolosis of the gallbladder so these are all the different strawberry appearances which they will ask you moving on to the next asteroid body one in path one in micro in micro if you remember recently we've done it in the session it is seen with sporothrix schenkai the rose gardener's disease that can show you an asteroid body an asteroid body along with shawman body if seen in pathology will be a case of sarcoidosis which i've shown you in the previous sessions of this 10 on 10 series only so so many one liners done maybe a lengthy list for you because i've recently taught you and i want you to revise tell me the fried egg appearances fried egg appearance if i ask you in pathology i think for the brain tumor you already know oligodendroglioma shows you fried egg appearance in the genital tumors i will think of seminoma if it is the testis and i will think of disgerminoma if it is going to be the ovary in hemat today itself we did hairy cell leukemia in bone marrow biopsy shows you fried egg so two tiny little homeworks which i think you can easily tell me which are the two microbiology one fungus one bacteria which are going to show you fried egg appearance and that's going to be one of the easiest quizzes uh, you know quiz questions or homework questions that you have which wraps up today's session of course you have a mixed bag of telegram quiz coming up tomorrow thereafter i'll be posting the last day also which is going to be the day 10 on 10 and thereafter once i'm done with all of that i'll give you the next plan of action that we'll have for microbiology up till your exam but till then do revise these 10 on 10 series revise the lrr sessions that is something which will help you in your last minute revision a lot and take my word on that see you in the next session